Hey Geeks, I'm Trey Guillotine and you're watching Geekly Trends where I give a few thoughts of some of the geeky trends that have happened in the past week. Remember, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it so others can join in the conversation. Marvel movie and TV shows could be leaving Netflix, but first... There's a new Pokemon movie coming out, and it kind of has me very, very nostalgic. It's Pokemon the movie, I Choose You. And it's going to retell the story of Ash and Pikachu and how they became best friends. If you watched Pokemon, if you watched the Pokemon series from the beginning, it's the very first episode. Ash wakes up, he gets his Pokemon, it's Pikachu. Pikachu is a stubborn little brat, and he and Pikachu won't go in his Pokeball, so Ash is, like, trying to bring him around, and he's, like, tied to a, a string or, like, a leash, and they, they don't get along, but then, but then Ash protects Pikachu from some mean Pokemon, and then, and then Pikachu uses his, you know, thunder, his Thundershot, to to attack the Pokemon to save Ash, and then Ash rushes into a Poke Center, and at the end of the and they, at the end of the episode, they see Ho oh, oh, one of the legendary Pokemon, not even from Gen One, from Gen Two. They see a legendary Pokemon from Gen Two. So like before Gen Two was even a thing, they saw Ho oh, oh, which was a legendary Pokemon from Gen Two. That's the entire story. That's the entire story of how Ash and Pikachu met. So I'm a little concerned of how they're going to fill this movie. Don't get me wrong. The trailer looks the trailer looks really good and it looks really sweet and like I said it's very nostalgic. But unless they add a lot to those initial moments of Ash and Pikachu or if they even go a little further maybe it'll be like his be like a really quick rundown of him getting all eight badges and going to the and going to fight the Pokemon champions. Like that'd be a that'd be a pretty good that'd be a pretty good movie in my opinion. But it just seems like the initial story, the one that I just told you, the, the initial story happens in 20 minutes of an anime episode. So them trying to stretch out an anime, a 20 minute anime episode into an hour or an hour and a half movie, even that, like it, it's kind of much. So I'm kind of, so I'm, I'm not so much worried. I'm just curious of how they're going to do this. If they're going to be adding new parts of the story or if it's just going to be a long stretched out retelling of a story we already know. Suicide Squad 2 just got his director in Gavin O'Connor, which he did the movie The Accountant. And isn't that the Ben Affleck movie where he's like an accountant for the mob, but he's also like an action kick-ass kind of person? I didn't see it. Honestly, most of the movies I watch now are just sci-fi, fantasy, or superhero movies now, which I, I should probably change. There are definitely other movies out there I should be watching. But I have to give DC props in their determination to continue their DC Extended Universe. Don't get me wrong, Wonder Woman was amazing, but that's the only movie they've put out that I've personally have enjoyed. Uh, Suicide Squad, I probably enjoyed even the least of their movies. I enjoyed Suicide Squad the least. Especially since it was a movie that was about bad guys, but all the bad guys had, like, you know, their own little lovable moments, and, and Deadshot was trying to, you know, be a good father, and, and Harley Quinn was all romantic about the Joker, which that's, that, that's an entire, that's an entirely other videos worth of content to talk about the Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship. But it also just wasn't a good movie, in my opinion. But if they're going to go forward with The Suicide Squad 2, I'm wondering how they're going to do it and what they're going to be focusing on. There were some rumors before that a Suicide Squad 2 movie would actually focus on Gotham City Sirens, uh, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman uh, living, I think, I think in the comics they live together in an apartment. I don't know the story of Gotham City of Science, just the idea behind it, and that actually sounds pretty cool. I would actually be really excited to see, you know, not only Harley Quinn doing her own thing, but also see Poison Ivy and see Catwoman, how they're reimagined in this new DC Extended Universe. But of course it's also going to have the Joker and Deadshot, so maybe it will be more like the Suicide Squad's back together and they're gonna go be bad guys, but save the day. I, the The movie just didn't work for me. It really didn't. And they had a chance to really take these characters who are bad guys and make them bad guys but being forced to do the right thing and they, they didn't. They kind of made them bad guys who are going to be now plucky heroes. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, these characters were criminals but they weren't bad guys. Whereas you know, Harley Quinn and the Joker and Deadshot and these ki these characters, they're bad guys. So it, it's kind of, it just didn't work that, you know, in the end they was like, we're going to fight the bad guy to save the day. I, it, the movie just didn't work for me. The, the fact that they're doing a Suicide Squad 2, I applaud them in their determination and I applaud them by sticking by their, their content. I just, I don't, 
I hope the movie's good. I hope the movie's good. I didn't see The Accountant. I don't think I've seen another movie directed by Gavin O'Connor. I hope Suicide Squad is every... This is what I say about every DC movie. I hope the movie's good. I hope it's good, but I'm not going to hold my breath. It was cryptically announced that the game that the game development company Gearbox is working on a game that is probably Borderlands 3. This was announced without giving any specifics. They just said like 90% of the company is working on a game that they really want them to be that the that the fan base really wants them to be working on. And there's a really good chance that that means it's going to be Borderlands 3 or or an installment into the Borderlands franchise as there are four installments of the Borderlands franchise, but only Borderlands and Borderlands 2. Then there's the Borderlands pre-sequel that comes out after Borderlands 2, but bef well, it's a story told after the events, the story is told after the events of Borderlands 2, but the story takes place before Borderlands 2, after Borderlands 1, and then, what is it? And then there's Tales from the Borderlands, which is the Telltale game, which I still haven't beaten, I really need to get on that, that tells another story on Pandora in the Borderlands uh, that takes place after two, but I don't know where it is in the timeline as regards to when the story is be told of the pre-sequel. I think Borderlands is a great series, especially Borderlands 2 when they actually put a really strong story and really strong characters into it. I think that's why I enjoyed playing the hell out of Borderlands 2 over Borderlands 1. So I'm actually, so I'd actually be pretty excited to see what they have in store for to see what they have in store for Borderlands 3, what kind of new uh, playable classes they're going to introduce, what what these new characters are going to be that you're going to be playing, if it's going to be, if it's going to have the, if it's going to have, like in 2, you had the returning playable characters of 1 as main characters in Borderlands 2, if that'll be the same thing in, say, Borderlands 3, if Salvador or, if, Sal if Salvador or even Zero will be main characters in Borderlands 3. I know Zero is in... Uh, Bo Tales from the Borderlands, which I thought was really cool. But I'm really interested to see what they have in store for this game. Staying on the topic of video games, some information was released for the Marvel Avengers project, which is the collaboration between Marvel and Square Enix to make a kind of Marvel video game universe franchise uh, for Marvel video games, for Marvel video games. It looks like that the Marvel Avengers project is going to be a third person online action adventure very similar to a third-person cover shooter. The fact that they're comparing this to a third-person cover shooter makes me curious about what what what's the what's the game going to be? I've always imagined these games like having a Captain America game kind of like Uncharted or Tomb Raider where you're running around you're climbing things and you are shooting because Captain America is, you know, known to pick up a gun once every now and then. But I'm trying to imagine that for other heroes like the Hulk or Thor or Iron Man or Black Panther or Doctor Strange. I don't see these characters as much like covering and shooting behind cover as just kind of being out there in the middle of a fight fighting kind of like Batman kind of like the Batman Arkham games. I'm really excited to get more information about these games. It's video games, it's, it's Marvel. It's going to be separate from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and from the comics. It's going to be its own, I guess, self-contained universe of Marvel characters. So the canon is going to be different. The origin stories might be different from what they've been in the movies or in the comics. But I am really excited to get more information about this game. So some bad news, in my opinion, for Marvel is that Disney, who owns Marvel, is taking away their movies and TV shows from Netflix. This includes all of their Disney animated movies, their Disney animated shows, and their Marvel movies and TV shows. So, so things like Captain America Civil War, or Doctor Strange, or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Agent Carter that are on, that are on Netflix, they're going to be taken away by like 2019. Because Disney wants to make their own streaming service. I think this is stupid for many reasons. We're getting to a point in television shows that every every channel has their own streaming service. Netflix, I don't, I don't know who was first, but, but the big one that was there was Netflix had it and all the shows were going to Netflix, but then HBO wanted HBO Go and then Hulu's doing their own thing and now Disney is going to be doing their own thing and it's just building to the point that you're subscribing yourself to like a dozen different things so you can watch these TV shows. And in my opinion, when everyone has a streaming service, no one is subscribing to streaming services anymore. Like it's decisions like this that kind of just reinforce wanting to pirate TV shows and movies because no one wants to be pe because no one wants to be paying a million dollars a month to watch 50 different streaming services when they can just find what they're looking for online and watch it. I think this is just a really dumb idea for Disney to do, and it has, 
And I feel that it has no other, there's no other motivation behind it but for Disney to make more money. Which I've said before, I hate it when the business culture or the, I the ideas of business get in the way of things like this, of TV shows, of video games, of movies, when decisions are made business-wise that just don't work for TV show for, for, for TV shows. At the moment, it's unknown whether this decision is going to affect the Marvel Netflix shows like Daredevil, Jessica Jones, or Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, or Defenders. I feel there's a good chance that Disney will leave those shows there because they are made with Netflix and produced with Netflix. But on the other hand, if we're going to talk about business, business decisions getting in the way of these TV shows, that if I were Netflix, I'd be like, you know what? You want to take you want you want to take part of your ball and go home. Have the whole thing, and Netflix back out of making of making Netflix TV shows for Marvel, and Disney can do it themselves. Disney has been doing a good job producing movies for Marvel. Uh, their TV shows that they produce that aren't Netflix are okay. Hopefully, they're not going to be really bad. Adding in humans and the other shows that are coming in, hopefully, they aren't going to be really bad. But the Netflix shows have been amazing. So if I were Netflix, that's probably the decision I would make. It was like, fine, you wanna you wanna do your own thing, do all of your own thing. Make your Netflix shows without Netflix. Have fun. And it's definitely Netflix influence that make these shows, that make the Netflix shows on Netflix, the Marvel shows, so dark, so gritty, so adult, and so mature. So I really think it'd be difficult for Disney to I don't think it'd be impossible. I'm sure they could probably pull it off, but I think I think it'd be a little more difficult for Disney to continue to capture that kind of dark tone with their shows like Daredevil or Jessica Jones if they were taken away from Netflix. But those shows are also very popular for Netflix, so I don't think so. I, so I'm so chances are Netflix would want to keep as much as they can of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and specifically those shows in their on their service. But I ultimately think that having a million streaming services is going to cause people to not get streaming services and stop paying for cable, for streaming service, and something other, some other stupid decision is going to be made to just ruin the rest of the world. When planning your next Wizard World Comic Con experience, make sure you use the discount code GUILLOTINEGEEK online to get 10% off your ticket purchase, and use those savings to buy some merch or meet a celebrity. What do you think of these geekly trends? Let me know in the comments, and share the video around so others can join in the conversation. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and follow me on all the internet. You can check out my written content at guillotinegeek.blogspot.com, and you can support my future content by becoming a patron on my Patreon, and you can subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. Thanks for watching and have fun. One, so Captain America, Thor, Hulk.